Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups. And before we go any further, I want to tell you right now that we are just in the start of Horror Fest 2022. We have a great lineup planned. We are now in Jordan Peele Week. So join us on Monday night when we talk about Get Out on PCP Movie Night and join us on Saturday night first. That's right, tomorrow night we talk about us and that's going to be a debate for the ages between me and Dylan from Dylan's Horror Show. However, it is Friday. That means it's time for the Rex and Robbie Show. Let's bring in Rex. What is up, my man? What's going on? Happy Friday, brother. Happy Friday, man. Here with you again for a fantastic topic. We both Another like good movies. Topic. Yeah, we both like GTA movies. Key comic in the house. Thank you. Oh, yes. Us. Thank you, GT Key Comics. Um, so we but yeah, this is something that comes up all the time when I'm just chilling with the homies, chilling with my friends, and we're talking about remakes. And all the discussion usually is, oh, another remake, another reboot, another requel, or whatever, right? But some of our favorite movies that we always talk about are technically remakes, right? So we're going to dive into the discussion today. What are the best movie remakes of all time? And we want Show your opinion. House. What's up, buddy? Sorry, What's I up, didn't Show mean to interrupt you. Oh, you're fine. Uh, shouting out the shouting out the comments. I appreciate that, Rex. So why don't you uh what do you what do you think about remakes overall? Rex? Well, let, let me say this. Okay. I I your topics are getting better and better. You're actually you're actually coming up with some pretty good ones. What's interesting is every time you come up with a topic, I have to do some research and I learn something. So on my list are gonna be, let me see, two movies that were remakes that I did not realize were remakes, actually. Because they were not straight line remakes, you know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, like uh, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which is on my list. But you know, where it's just a straight remake, same title, same everything. So that that's what's interesting. So two movies that came up on the list, I did not realize were remakes. I guess I sort of knew, but I didn't really know. Yeah, um, because there's other things like, uh, for instance, True Lies. When we were talking about that during Action Fest, we re we found out that that was a remake of like a French film or something like that. So that sometimes you don't even think about stuff like that. Like Insomnia by Christopher Nolan, that's a remake. So so to answer your, your first question to me, I, one collection down, what's going on, man? So yeah, Scarface was a remake too. That's right. That's absolutely right. Um, I did not realize that either. Um, as I was yeah, because that's story. like the old like black and white like 30s or 40s film, the right? Cagney one, yeah. yeah. So, and that's also on my list, man. It, we're revealing my list without my revealing the list. So, <laughs> to answer your question, I think maybe, you know, what do I think of remakes? They can go good, they can go bad. A lot of people say that that it 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 squashes the ingenuity or imagination of of uh, the, the creators and stuff because they're they're really just kind of piggybacking off of success of something else. I don't know. I mean, but then after doing the research, almost everything has some sort of remake inspiration, as it would seem, you know? So to a certain extent, almost every movie is kind of a remake, okay? Every sequel yeah. is kind of a remake, you know? So I, I think that uh, it can be good or bad, just like anything else. You know, it depends on how they handle it, you know? Um, I, I do have a list of really, really bad remakes, um, that did yeah, I'm not, starting. They're starting to pop in my head, and I'm writing them down right now. So yeah, I mean, you know, so in a sense, there's so much there. It's it's really kind of hard. Um, one collection down. He didn't like the new Battlestar Galactica. I actually liked it. I I liked the the. the, the I think the he's saying version. that's that's his favorite TV remake. Is the way I think. Oh, it's his yeah. favorite. Okay, all right. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Yeah, actually, I liked I like both versions. You know, each one had its own uniqueness. Um, obviously the original one with a lower budget and, you know, kind of goofy stuff going on. And, you know, uh, uh, you know, I think we talked about this on a show, you know, uh, Felder carb turned into frack frack was far more effective. I thought, um, you know, that kind of thing, but, but, uh, yeah. So I, I, I think that, that it's good or bad. I, I don't really have like, you know, it's bad or it's good or it's whatever. I think it's just part of, of movie making. Yeah. You know I mean? And, and, Basically, I, I left it up to Rex to determine what a remake is to to him, right? Because everybody's got these very strict definitions and sub definitions. Like some people are like, "That's not a remake; it's a it's a readaptation of the novel." Say, like we got Hellraiser coming out. Is that a reboot? Is it a remake? Is it a requel? What is it? Well, it's it's like just they're doing the the novella again, right? But technically, right. they've already done that, so it's a remake to me. 
You get what I'm saying? Like same well, title I, and all that kind yeah, of stuff. I, I think what you just said proves the point, you know, very accurately. So if, you know, I don't think there are many remakes that you could say was a carbon copy just with different actors. I, I very few times do you see that. Okay. Each time there's one time and I got that on my list of worst and really? I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and say go that. Ahead, That's that like, psycho. Do you remember that one? When yeah. Gus Van Sant remade Psycho shot for shot, but like, see, some remakes are misguided. Some like there are certain things like, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. What were you well, still going to say, Rex? That was uh, who was in that? Um, it was Vince Vaughn and Hesh, who just recently we lost, unfortunately. But William H Macy, so Julian Julian Moore. One? That was the Christian Bale one for Psycho. You're thinking of American Psycho. Oh, yeah. I'm talking yes. about the 1998 shot for shot remake they did of Hitchcock Psycho with Vince Vaughn as Norman that's... Bates. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. That's... There's a piece of me that likes that movie, but it's like the most weird. Like, why did you do this? It's so weird, man. So one collection down, worst Robocop. I would agree with that one. I still haven't I seen that remake. Well, yeah, let's, I, I, let's let's get some of these worse out of the way. So the, just right, the ones get, that popped in my the yeah, the ones that were popped in my head were the Psycho one. Uh, right. The recent Firestarter movie I thought was terrible. I hated it. See it. I no, hated I it. I wouldn't no recommend. It. It. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Just read the book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, now uh, definitely see it. One of the worst ones, man, because they lose every bit of atmosphere that made the original so good. Is the Fog? I think the Fog is such an atrocious remake, and uh, they, they like John Carpenter. And Deborah Hill, they had to go through a lot of painstaking stuff to get the fog to work right, but it right. still works so well in that movie. It's atmospheric. In the fog remake with uh, Tom Welling, is that his name from Smallville? Like they they use CG fog and they just they they dumb it up. Other things are like obviously Nightmare on Elm Street. I just watched that one because we're covering the entire franchise for <laughs> Horror Fest. Right. The remake of Nightmare on Elm Street is terrible. Right. Just I, I cannot stand it. And I don't like the remake of Halloween either. The Rob Zombie one. So those are the ones I have for worse. What about you, Rex? Um, I would agree with your choices. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. That was a classic. It's going to be very hard to redo that in, in, in any effective form. So my worst ones. OK, um, let's say there was, of course, The Mummy, the one with Tom Cruise and Russell Crowe. That was just brutally bad. OK, the, you know, so I couldn't stand that one. The remake of Red Dawn. I was brutal. I mean, compared to the original, just it was just so I don't know, man. I, I don't know. It was just bad. And I thought it was gonna be good. And then I'm watching and I'm like, oh, this is brutal. This is this is not good at all. Um, rollerball has to be one of the worst all time on my list. Okay, when, you took this LL great cool James Con classic movie and you turned it into this. I, I could I, I really couldn't I couldn't understand it. It was horrible. It was horrible. And then, of course, this one, you know, Amy will probably get mad at me, but is it a remake? Is it a sequel? I don't know, but I just felt it was really bad, and that was Blade Runner 2049. Okay? okay. And you've heard me mention that before, how much I disliked it. You know, so is it a sequel? Is it a remake? Who cares? It's just bad. Okay? You know, I, and, and there was no way to really, really, I, I don't know what you could have done with it. But it totally lacked any substance like the first one. Um, you know, obviously. Um, so yeah, that was, you know, the Harrison Ford, you know, even bring Harrison Ford in, into the, didn't help it very much. You I know, love how, like, your... even in the conversation about remakes, <laughs> you find a way to talk shit about Blade Runner 2049. I love it. Yep. I love it. I think it's great. You, yep. And, and no, it came I love you talking shit is what I'm saying. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I do it very well. It's a gift. Um, yes. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, you, you turn Harrison Ford into this hard nosed street cop you know, battling his way through this 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 dystopian future into some crazy old guy in Vegas. That's what you essentially did. You know, and I'm watching this like, dude, this is bad. This is just bad. It's boring. It's slow. It's it's everything else that, that just kind of took away from it. Um, rollerball, I just I I can't even. I, I mean that that out of my list has to be the absolute I remember worst. was LL Cool J in that one? I remember yes, it had the LL cool and it J had the and it had the dude from like American Pie, like one of the guys from American yeah, Pie. I, I think that killed his career. I, I really do. I oh, think yeah, Rollerball. A, I mean, I don't remember him doing anything else. What was his that. name? Like Chris Klein or something like that? I yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. He was in something else that really vaulted him, and that, and then he made that movie, and it died. It just at least L. Cool J went on the Law and Order or whatever. Uh, uh, 
uh, what was it? Uh, uh, whatever TV show that he went on with with uh, uh, one of Robin. the Law and Orders. One of, was it SVU yeah. or something? I have no yeah, idea. SVU, I don't know. Okay. Whatever. But but at least he he had a, a nice little TV career. Okay, that poor guy, pff, nothing killed yeah. him. Killed him. It was it was brutal. Um, they totally just I, I I don't know what they did. A, the total. You know that that that, that James Conn version had this 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 view, this really kind of dystopian, rich people, poor people. You know, it made its point very very well. You know, and then you turn it into some sort of of another movie. I, I mean, you could have taken that that second Rollerball movie, replaced Rollerball with football, it would have been the same movie. Okay, yeah, a bunch of overpaid guys, you know, whatever, and and you know, just going around. Now there's a conspiracy and some some evil bad guy, and it just. It was just horrible. You took this wonderful artistic movie that had plenty of action. You turned it into this. So I, I was very, very upset with that movie. I, that, was, that one was really bad. Another remake I just thought of that I do not like. And as much as I love Keanu Reeves, the remake of Day the Earth Stood Still. I just, I'm not oh, yeah, like, that, you, that, that movie's that not bad. meant to be some kind of big, giant, epic, like, it's, it, they, they lost the subtlety of the message, I think, in that. And the directness of it as well. I don't know, but I don't like that one. So let's talk about the ones we do like then. Right. Hey, you might you might have should have reversed this question. Yeah. Right. No kidding. Right. <laughs> well, when we're thinking of our favorites, uh, uh, you know, we, we 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 obviously look up these lists because sometimes we we for, we can't remember things. and We want to see what exactly is the remakes. And, and you, you get reminded right. of all the bad ones, you know, because when I was looking at my there list. A lot. Oh, there's a lot of bad ones. All right. So uh, what, what, what are the best re remakes then, Rex? All, All right. right, so I'm going to split it up into, into into I went over the five limit you, you gave us, and so did you. So I don't even know why you put that number out there. I um, actually said five to ten in the email. I just want to say. Oh, I, I may have missed that. Okay. Um, all right, so first off, my all-time favorite, I love the original, and I love what they did this time around, is Dune. Okay. You know, the original had its way, and this one, I think it was a good idea to split it into two movies. Uh, it's, you know, a a very big book if you haven't read it it's definitely a great book to read um but there's a lot in there um to unpack so i thought they made a good decision doing that um you know each one had its uniqueness because there's a lot of thought that goes in that, that the books you know there's a lot of people a lot of the 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 uh uh the book is written in a kind of first person and they're thinking and thinking to them, themselves i think that the second one did a better job of how how they dealt with it than the first one uh, the first one, there was just a lot of, you know, uh, a voiceover of the actor, you know, in the scene without them really talking, which I thought was a good way to handle it. But I think that somehow this this last one, they managed to deal with that without a lot of the voiceovers, you know, so that I think that that was that was well done. So that 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 probably is, you know, when you like the original and you like the remake and you think they're both quality, then I think that that's got to be your favorite. Yeah, I, I was really, really impressed with Dune. It's been forever since I've seen the original, and throughout many of our discussions, you you always reference Dune. And I got the book. I want to dive into it eventually, um, but I I want to revisit that old movie uh, with with Kyle MacLachlan and and yeah. and and see it again because there I do remember there's for for its time like what eighty four or something like that. Yeah. It was quite the spectacle, right? It for was. what they were doing, and they just had to. They just unfortunately they were trying to shove too much into too little time. Right. Yeah, it, it was it was going to be a difficult thing to do, but it was an epic movie of epic proportions. Even the the the, the ending credits with uh, 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 you know with the waves rolling and you know it, it just everything was done. Sheldon, yeah, no doubt, buddy. That's a, that was a good guess. Uh, the full clips here, uh, Chamorro. What's going on, buddy? Um, so, and BJ's here as well. Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah, for me, you know, obviously, I enjoyed the books, I enjoyed the movies. So, so you've done something and not to say that you don't want to appeal to a general audience, but when you can satisfy a general, general audience, which maybe the first movie didn't really do because it was a little confusing. If you hadn't followed the books, the second movie obviously managed to, to overcome that. I feel like, uh, Sheldon, that's right. Patrick Stewart was uh, Gurney Halleck. Uh, uh, um, that was the first time I had seen Patrick Stewart, uh, in anything. I, I think he was a, a big stage guy. Um, uh, you know, so, so that to me was 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 really big. Um, and then I, I, I've got a couple on my list that I'm sure are also on your list. Obviously, uh, The Fly, um, you know, it, it, I knew it was a remake because as we were kids, obviously the Vincent Price movie 
was on, you know, was on television or whatever. And, you know, it, 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 it you know, I was, I was a little kid when I first saw it and it really affected me because that last scene where you got the little, little Vincent Price head on the fly, you know, and, you know, help me or whatever he says, hey, you know, that really freaked me out. Yeah. Yeah. That really freaked me out as a kid. So that was a movie that always stuck in my mind. Um, Mark, I, I can, Mark disagrees with me. <laughs> Um, and then you had the, the the remake in 1986, and that was a whole different level of horror. You know, they they made it, took advantage of the special effects, took advantage of, you know, I think what was it? Gina Davis was in it. Um, uh, Jeff Goldblum. Yep. They did a great job. You know, so the acting was good. So it was really, uh, yeah, it was it was really a completely different movie than than the original Fly. And and one collection down. I. I I totally agree with you. It it, it de definitely is on a total le a different level, but you know, obviously, I, I still like the Vincent Price you know uh, 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 version of it because it just it has such a, a huge effect on me. Yeah, that's a great. I do have the fly on my list. I kind of sure. figured. I, yeah. yeah, I kind of figured. Anytime I hit a horror film, I'm like, Roddy probably has this on his list. Yeah, I, I think most of mine are horror films. <laughs> kind of figured that. So, well, let's talk about the next one. I'm sure is on your list. The thing. Well, Okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yep, I could have guessed it. You know, that was uh, that was great. I mean, I loved it. I, I, I. What was it? I did look this up. The thing from another world in 1951. Now, yeah. I, I got to say that I knew the Howard about Hawks the movie. film, right? That was a Howard Hawks yeah. film. I, think. Yeah. I knew about the movie, but I, I, I don't remember watching. I may have, you know, on TV when it was when it, when it was on, but I don't remember it. But I do remember the uh, Kurt Russell one, right? Uh, uh, that one was very impactful. They they made the most use of uh, of uh, sci you know special effects of the time and, you know at that time, but that was uh, that was good. Chamorro, yes, uh, yeah, I, I got a lot of westerns as well. Um, so what what about you? What else is on your list? Well, all right, so and I brought some visual aids here because why not? But one that I don't have physically and. To just go off on what you were saying, yes, The Fly and The Thing, amazing movies, right? The Fly, you talked about, the, it it elevated it to this new dimension of body horror that only Cronenberg can deliver. And such brilliant performances from everybody involved, particularly Goldblum and Davis. They are amazing in, this show, in that movie. The Thing... So Howard Hawks is one of John Carpenter's favorite filmmakers and John's always wanted to do a Western, right? And he never really got the chance to do a proper Western, but he's done Western things in some of his movies. But uh, he loved the, the original thing so much. It's the movie that they're watching at the end of Halloween. If you remember like, and he, oh, yeah. yeah. And he replicates the opening and everything. This is, this is such a good movie. This is one of the best. And what's crazy is in 1982, this movie got, critically tanked and made no money it was a failure it yeah, was know, like it was a that. failure across the board and it's now regarded <laughs> as one of the greatest remakes of all time one that i don't have that i really i need to rectify that i think the fright night remake with uh like colin farrell and david tennant and what's his name that played Chekhov in the new star trek movies he recently oh, he passed away several years yeah, the ago young man that passed away oh yeah geez. Uh, it's a Russian name, I remember. Yeah, Anton something. I, oh, yes, Anton something. I can't remember now. I'm sure somebody in the chat's going to let us know, but that remake is way better than it has any right to be. Like, straight up. I, I freaking love it. So I, I got to throw that one out, and I see that this one's mentioned just now, but yes, the Zack Snyder, Dawn of the Dead, written yeah, by James that. Gunn. Yeah, written by James Gunn. Now, when this movie came out, nobody knows who Zack Snyder is, you know? Nobody really even knows who James Gunn is. Not really. Right. And I'm like, how dare you try to remake my, my beloved George A. Romero, Dawn of the Dead. But this works for me. The zombies are faster. It's updated a little bit. It's got, it's got gore. I don't think it has yeah, as good as gore. Thank you, buddy. Anton Yelchin. Yes, Yelchin. Thank you so much. The Friday Night Remake is good. It's really solid, but Dawn of the Dead. This is another one that has that's better than it has any right to be. Thank you so much, Manny, for the uh, super sticker. I can't see it unfortunately, so I don't know what it is. Streamyard needs to let, let us show like see these stickers. I don't know. Anyway. You don't have you don't have it you don't have it running simultaneous simultaneously on YouTube. 
No, I don't, man. I'm sorry. Do you? Uh, what, what's the super sticker? <laughs> uh, 99 cents. He doesn't say what it's for, though. Okay, nice. <laughs> Maybe that's the value of our opinions. Is about okay, worth probably. Cents. And then figure drawing said something funny about Siskel and Ebert uh, reviewing uh, the thing and the fly. Oh, they shit all over both of those movies. They said they were just like gross, right? Like when they were, at least with the thing, I know, because they said that about all those movies back in those days. And uh, Rob Botin, who did the effects on the fly, that stuff is amazing. It still holds up today. It's still gnarly. It's still creepy. Right. It still gets you. Um. So, all right. So, so then I got a couple of westerns that I did not. I guess I sort of knew was a remake. I at least one of them I knew. I knew the Magnificent Seven was a remake by Kurosawa, right? Uh, from his Seven, Seven Samurai. So, so yeah. I did sort of know that. And then Fistful of Dollars, I did not realize, was also a, a, a Kira Kurosawa That's Yojimbo, uh, remake. Right? Uh, what'd you say? Is that Yojimbo, right? Yojimbo, yeah. yes. I did not realize that. So that was something I learned today. Uh, a big Western fan, obviously. Lo loved, the, uh, loved both those movies. So You could almost uh, even say that uh, Star Wars, in a way, is kind of a remake of Hidden Fortress from Kurosawa. A little bit. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, through the years, people have accused George Lucas of, of you know, uh, liberally taking different different ideas. You know, the, the 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 samurai concept, the the knight concept. You know, there was a lot of that going on. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, what what are you going to say? Yeah, I mean, this goes back to your original question. You know, it, it is what's a remake? What's not? You know, can you really define that? I don't know that you can. So you know that that becomes a problem. Um, so hey, Chamorro, what's going? On? Yeah, look at that. He's just throwing money at you. Yeah, thank you. Thank um, you. I feel like a stripper. Don't you? Rex? <laughs> like, just getting dollars thrown at us. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, so I, I really enjoyed those both both those movies. Uh, you know, like I said, the Magnificent Seven. I kind of I kind of remember somebody mentioned that, but I really did not know Fistful of Dollars was you know essentially a remake of uh, Yojimbo. So yeah. that that was very interesting to find out. Um, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, obviously, uh, the uh, the 1978 version. I, I think the 1950. I think I saw the 1956 version on TV. The remake was definitely so much better. Uh, the, you know, the 1956 version I think was more of a. I read someone was more of a comment on the McCarthy era and you know with communism, whereas when they remade it in the 70s, they they kind of had a. They weren't dealing with that anymore, and they knew that would not that was the, that was the past, and that would, would not that kind of theme would not really uh, uh, attract a new audience. So they made it a lot scarier and a lot creepier. Um, you know, obviously. Um, um, oh, but, Cape uh, Fear is a good one, Sheldon. I, I totally didn't even think about Cape Fear. Scorsese's yeah, Cape Fear is great. Good. Yeah, uh, Tomb Raider and Silent Hill. So BJ. Tomb Raider. I don't. I don't think I saw Silent Hill, but Tomb Raider. Are you taught? Are you saying the remake was? Good or bad? I think he's on a different. He's asking about best video game movies. That's a conversation for another day, BJ. We may that actually is. have to do that. That yeah. is. Uh, but I thought the Tomb Raider re remake was pretty crappy. And I, I do like the, uh, I do like the Invasion, the seventies one with like Donald Sutherland and that whole like that thing. But I really do love that the the original black and white one. Like, what is that? Kevin McCarthy, I think that's in that. I love yeah. that movie. And they're watching it in Gremlins. I think Dante, Joe Dante, is a huge fan. Of that film, and I and so am I. I. I love both of them, and they didn't they remake it again in like the '90s or something. Just call it Invasions or Body Snatchers or something like that. I think I, they remade I it again. I, I didn't see it for sure. Yeah, I think they did. And the Blob remake, figure drawing, I do like that one. I like that one as well. Um, all right, so I have two honorable mentions though. Okay, uh, so Three Ten to Yuma, and then uh, True Grit. I think somebody already mentioned True Grit. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't like the Jeff uh, uh, Bridges version of, uh, of, of the character. Rooster? I like John Wayne better, but I got to tell you in terms of the, uh, uh, the girl, uh, you know, that's one of the first times we saw Haley Steinfeld. She really took it away, you know, in the remake, whereas the other one seemed, I don't know, in the John Wayne version, she just seemed kind of know-it-all-ish and was kind of, grading i found the character to be somewhat grading yeah. whereas the Haley steinfeld character you could feel for that kid you know what i mean having to grow up and, and make adult decisions before she's really capable or ready to do so so she really stole it from me so i thought that was a, a really good remake 310 to yuma the original glenn ford 
uh, and then they remade it with uh, Russell Russell Crowe and Christian Bale. I I thought that was a great remake. I like the original. That's a great movie. I thought the remake, yeah, I thought the remake was quite good as well. So so those were definitely a couple winners uh, in my opinion. Yeah, I really like both of those. I have True Grit on my list, so I got the visual aid right there. There you uh, go. I'm a huge Coen Brothers fel- uh, fan. And when I heard that they were going to do this, it was intriguing to me. But you're right. Uh, Haley St- Stenfeld, Steinfeld, she steals the show. She's amazing. She yeah. was nominated for an Academy Award in here, right? It was phenomenal. And yeah. I even, I love Matt Damon and Josh Brolin. They're like kind of funny. Like there's like a comedy to it that, that the Coen Brothers took this thing. They honored the original, but they still made it a Coen Brothers movie, which I really yeah. appreciate. Well, I think what, what the, the remake was able to do was to expand on the characters a little bit more. Because the problem was by the time John Wayne had made True Grit, it was already the back half of his career. And he was the, he was the, the, the box, office, box office powerhouse. So any movie he was in had to focus on his character, you know, no matter what, because he was the box office mover. Whereas this time they had a little bit more artistic freedom, you know, that they, they could, you know, they could, they could, uh, um, they could explore the other characters a little bit more because there wasn't, you know, Jeff Bridges obviously has had a very long career, but he was not of that caliber. You, you, if you want to call it that, you know, so they could move off like with a Matt Damon or whatever. And then obviously Haley Steinfeld, the, the girl got, you know, a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more scenes. And that's when she really just kind of stole the show of, of the movie. Yeah. So I think, uh, I think that was, uh, that, let me see. Uh, real, uh, tomorrow, real, th- real talk. I think I like the chubby Russell Crowe better than skinny Russell Crowe. <laughs> Not chubby like his, like he looked in Zeus, my friend. Okay. I mean, <laughs> Russell Crowe, I, I love his work. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, um, uh, 310 to Yuma was a great one. What was the, the one, uh, uh, the Quick and the Dead. I thought that was a great movie oh, that he did. I love that movie. Sam uh, Raimi movie, man. He did years and years ago with Denzel Washington. Like one of the first films where, oh, I forget the name of it. Oh, that was Virtuosity. Virtuosity. I, I, I Where he's the work. he's like the computer villain or something, like the computer yes, program. Yes, yes, yeah, the artificial uh, intelligence, yes. I love that movie. Like there was, there was a time <laughs> where Russell Crowe was my jam. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yeah, really, I mean, he was... He was like in an Australian film called Romper Stomper. And like, I got into that, that film on the indie scene. And then, like, yeah, virtuosity, and he was in these roles. The Insider, which he did with uh, Al Pacino, a Michael Mann film about the dude that like, uh, like spilled the beans on the tobacco industry or whatever. Right. Like, very boring movie to some people. It's riveting to me, and his performance is one of the reasons why. And Gladiator, I I love Russell Crowe. Oh, well, Gladiator, I mean, it, that was it. That was where he broke. He completely broke loose, you know, and his career started to to really you know take off. Absolutely. Um, but but you know the the, the Zeus thing. Man, that was a bad casting choice. Man. <laughs> that was just brutal. They, they just, they totally, totally just mangled that. Uh, yeah. BJ's Dracula. I actually did really enjoy that. Uh, uh, the uh, Keanu Reeves uh, Dracula as oh, well. the Coppola one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's I mean, good. I think that his he. Uh, I don't know. I, I think that that was Keanu's one of Keanu's weakest performances, but. Um, who, who played Dracula in that? Um, Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. He was phenomenal in that. I mean, he was just absolutely incredible how he pulled all that off. Yeah. Um, so, but all in all, I, I thought it was a good, it was a good movie as well. I, I totally forgot about it. I got two more. So first up, Ocean's Eleven, remake of the Rat Pack film. Um, I love this movie. I, I First of all, I'm a Soderbergh fan. I like this movie. I think it's good. I don't really like Ocean's 12, but I do like Ocean's 13. But I like this movie. It, it captures that kind of fun heist movie and a great performance from an entire ensemble of brilliant performers. Brad Pitt, uh, Matt Damon, um, Andy Garcia, and my favorite, George Clooney. I love me some George Clooney, and I love that movie. And here's one that I want to uh, have a special shout out. Now, I love the original so much. This movie... What I love about this movie is it takes the idea of the original, takes some of the characters, but it totally makes it its own. And even it turns a horror film into an adventure film. And I'm going Steven 